Imagine if we could bring water from other space bodies in our solar system to Earth. We know that each planet, and even moons in our system, have their own unique flavor of water. So what would happen if we drained them all? Let's see. First up, we have Mars. The red planet might not have beach resorts like Earth, but it's got something special – frozen water. Up at the tippy top and down at the bottom of Mars, there are these awesome icy hats called polar ice caps. The northern cap is made of water and carbon dioxide. The southern cap is a bit fancier because it's mostly made of water ice. If Mars had its own polar bears, they would feel right at home there. In the winter, it gets even bigger as more stuff freezes onto it. And during Mars' summertime, these ice caps get a bit smaller, with some ice turning into gas. And don't forget about the frozen water hiding in the ground. Mars might look all rocky and dusty, but it's also got pockets of frozen water beneath the surface. So what if we took all this frozen Martian water and poured it onto Earth? Well, there would be some twists. Martian water is a bit different from Earth's. It has extra deuterium ice cubes inside. Deuterium is a cousin of regular hydrogen. It's a bit heavier and has an extra little buddy in its nucleus. And here's the thing. Earth life, including plants, animals, and aquatic critters, has evolved to love our hydrogen-rich water. Martian water's extra deuterium might be like giving them a different kind of drink they're not used to. Plants might change and start behaving in unexpected ways, as well as animals and fish. Plants might find Martian water a bit heavy to sip, like drinking a super-thick milkshake instead of a refreshing smoothie. Some might grow taller and stronger, while others might need a bit of time to get used to the new taste. As for animals, things get a bit more mysterious here. The effects would vary and depend on many factors. They might start behaving differently, eating different things in different amounts, becoming less or more energetic, and so on. High deuterium water might also influence the growth and development of animals, and they could catch many different infections and diseases. Same for fish and aquatic life? The metabolic processes of fish might change a lot, maybe even slow down or be less efficient. They could also catch a lot of health issues and imbalance. Possibly, the entire ecosystem would have to adjust to the new water. It's hard to say for sure, since we never tested anything like that, but it wouldn't be very pleasant for fish. Introducing Martian water on Earth would be a huge experiment. Our Earth is a delicate dance of ecosystems, so it would be like throwing a ball into a well-organized anthill. But Mars isn't the only celestial body in our solar system that has water. We also found some on the planet's moons. For example, on Europa, one of Jupiter's many satellites. Europa might look like a plain old ice ball on the outside, but underneath that icy crust, there's a hidden ocean that's more mysterious than a treasure map. But this ocean wouldn't be your ordinary swim spot. It's super cold, covered with lots of ice. However, even though it's freezing, scientists believe it might be able to stay liquid because of something called tidal heating. Tidal heating is what happens when one object in space gets all cuddly with another object. For example, if the moon is hanging out around a planet, the planet's gravity pulls on the moon, making it stretch and squish a little bit. And that's where the heat comes from. When you stretch and squish like that, it takes a bit of effort. It creates friction and heat inside the moon. And that's why the ocean itself doesn't turn into a gigantic ice block. In our case, it's because Europa is getting tugged and pulled by Jupiter with its enormous gravity. What's even more exciting is that this ocean could be a place for extraterrestrial life to hang out. We know that there are some bacteria that don't care about all these crazy temperatures. So if there's water, there might be some life. But that's just a possibility. Another moon with a cold ocean is Enceladus, one of Saturn's satellites. This little moon is impressive. It got a dazzling icy outfit that reflects sunlight like a space disco ball. Now, imagine you're walking on Enceladus, and suddenly, whoosh! Water vapors shoot out of the ground like a geyser at a water park. These icy geysers are like nature's super soakers, and they're shooting water and ice crystals way up high into space. Some of them make a beautiful ring around Saturn called the E-ring, like a shiny bracelet made of frozen water. 
and we found more than 100 of them on Encephalus. You might be wondering, where's all this water coming from? Well, just like with Europa, beneath Encephalus's icy crust, there's a hidden ocean. This ocean is so deep that you could stack a bunch of skyscrapers on top of each other, and it still wouldn't reach the bottom. Anyway, let's go back to our wild idea, bringing water from the secret oceans of Europa and Encephalus right here to Earth. If we did that, we would create some chaos. These extraterrestrial waters have their own unique flavors incompatible with our oceans. Europa's ocean water could be a bit salty with extra minerals, like a fancy spa water that's great for your skin. Encephalus's geyser water could be super sparkly, with some salt as well. That doesn't sound too bad, right? However, we're still not sure what else might be in that water. So, just like with Martian water, our marine life might start doing the water cha-cha with these new ingredients. Some species might find the new waters extra tasty and thrive, while others could have a much less pleasant time. Before we know the effects for sure, we need to study both moons in more detail. But all these celestial bodies have Earth-like water. What about, for example, another Saturn moon, Titan? Titan is a whole new world of seas and lakes, but not the kind you'd find on Earth. These lakes are filled with ethane and methane. They're made of hydrocarbons, like the stuff in your car's gas tank. Yes, exactly. These lakes are precious pools of fuel. And Titan's got way more of this fuel than Earth has oil and gas combined. They could also have a pinch of propane, and even a sprinkle of other things like hydrogen cyanide. Not a cocktail you'd want to drink. And they're also incredibly cold. Rain made of ethylene may erode the land and create underground caves. Oh, and Titan's lakes could have bubbles. It's like bubbles in your drink, but on a whole moon-sized level. These bubbles might be filled with nitrogen gas, and they could burst out like fireworks in the lakes. And when the bubbles pop, they might shape Titan's river deltas. As you can imagine, it's not the best liquid to bring to Earth. Our lakes and oceans would turn into exotic pools of hydrocarbons. Imagine lakes that don't ripple like water, but instead shimmer like liquid fuel. We'd have to find ways to adapt to this completely unfamiliar environment. Also, the hydrocarbons in Titan's lakes could solidify and turn into ice under Earth's different conditions. Imagine seeing chunks of icebergs floating on what used to be our oceans. Our boats might have to be redesigned to navigate through these icebergs. Also, rain wouldn't be water, and the winds would be much stronger than we're used to. Our cities, buildings, and infrastructure might have a tough time dealing with these extreme conditions. Not to mention the fact that this entire operation would really disrupt our ecosystems. What would happen to them is very unpredictable, but it wouldn't be good. We must remember, Earth's been perfecting its water mix for billions of years. Playing around with that mix could be like playing with a volcano. So let's appreciate and treasure our perfect Earth with its perfect water. I'll drink to that. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.